Open government data is any information the government collects by and large for its own purposes that it then makes available for other people to use for, for their purposes. It's government data that's open, and open means free for anyone to use, reuse and redistribute. The open data movement is a way of transforming the relationship between the citizen and government such that everyone knows what's going on and if everyone knows what's going on it'll be much more easy for us, for both parties uh, to participate uh, more fairly in society. Our lives are increasingly governed by data, in fact our lives increasingly are data uh, and, and given that not to be able to look at the information about us, where we live, who represents us, uh, the companies that do, that, that do business with, with, with government and so on, it starts to undermine the democracy. It's much broader than just government. Government is actually just one participant in our society. What we're seeing happening is actually the, the, the cusp of a, a major social change, global social change. Together, we actually have the ability to transform the way society works. Globally, we're actually bringing together, through sites like Wikipedia or collections of structured data, a, a, a big global overview of how society works and how we organise ourselves. So. We're just at the beginning of, of a, a major change in the way we operate. There are three ways that open government data can make the world a better place. Number one, uh, there's the fact that it enables companies, individuals, not-for-profits to go and build interesting, useful, valuable applications and services. Number two, I think it's about democracy, it's about participatory government, it's about transparency and accountability, it's an ability for us to see what our government is doing. And number three, I guess my one is why not? It's basically costless in most cases or close to costless to open up government data. Why not open that data up? It's already there, it's already being collected. Open data is important, I think, for several different reasons, and none of them is really is more important than the other. Um, so we have the possibility of generating economic value, which I think is at the forefront of many people's minds in, in you know hard times like like these. The creation of more jobs and more companies and more profitable companies that generate more tax revenue. That's obviously a, 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 you know a big thing about the potential power of of open data. There is also the absolutely classic old-fashioned issue of of making data openly available so that we can see potential corruption and misuse of public money and, and practices that are unfair or illegal that are nothing to do with money but are just hidden, whatever they may be. You could expect people to start businesses by adding value to data, taking the data and use it for, for uh, a certain application. Uh, it's also about transparency, but it's also about people empowering themselves to be better able to make decisions about their own lives uh, based on information that wasn't available before. Um, uh, and it's also about making the organizations that create the data more efficient and effective themselves as well. So for example, we do a project called where does my money go .org, which helps show you where your money, your tax money goes. That's a really important part, I think, of being a citizen, to know this is the biggest contribution I make towards the state. Um, where is it going? What's happening? And without data, open data from government, I can't answer that question. We use uh, federal pollution data and we mash it up into a map with electoral data to show you, you know, in near your postal code or any postal code you care about, what are all the facilities near you and how much do they pollute and what do they pollute and whose riding are they in? So you can begin to examine kind of what are pollution levels around you. My society uh, builds various different um, civic and social websites, then we look after them. Uh, and by civic and social websites, I mean services that do things like tell you who is my politician, how do I write to them, what did they say in parliament, how do they vote, what do they do with the money they get, or on the, that's on the democratic side, on the civic side we build services that say how do I get problems in my street fixed, how do I get information that I need to out of the government, um, and that sort of you know, simple problem in the future, how do I get my transport problem fixed, which is, is forthcoming. Um, in Vancouver, the garbage schedule is very dynamic, if you will. It changes on a regular basis, and so people always forget when to take the garbage out. And so now they can just go to a site, and they can register, and we'll send them an email, and it says, you know, uh, tomorrow's your garbage day. It's the type of application that the ordinary citizen really wraps their head around quite quickly. It delivers immediate use to them. And so when people see Van Trash, they go, ah, is this part of what open data is about? 
and we say yes and they go, well, I want more of this in my life. On the level of the European Union, it would be really interesting if we could actually um, get all this data into a single place so that we can search across the countries and actually start to compare things across countries. What we're trying to do with farmsubsidy.org is connect all the different government disclosures into one single data centre really so that citizens can go online and, and find out what's going on not only in their country but in other countries and they can make comparisons about how much farms get in one part of the EU against, as against another, how much citizens put in to the policy, how much it costs them um, if, if they're in one country as opposed to another country and this really is the seeds I think of a uh, of a kind of pan-European debate um, that ought to be there, seeing as we have a pan-European policy. One of my favorite examples of how World Bank data has been reused uh, occurred very soon after we opened up the database. We got a message back from a group that had simply taken our entire database and analyzed where all the gaps were in the data and then produced maps showing uh, country by country, indicator by indicator, year by year, uh, where the gaps were in the data. It didn't tell us anything we didn't already know, but it told it to us in a way that we had never seen before, and of course it made it public for everyone else to look at as well. We're at the point where we need the data released and we need a standard for that data to come out so that you can map it and compare it, because what's needed in Uganda, in Afghanistan, is not just knowing what DFID is doing, the UK money, what American money what is doing, but it's how all of that money fits together. We're working on an initiative called the International um, Aid Transparency Initiative, which is around developing standards for how donors, northern governments, should be transparent about the aid that they give, both to be accountable for the citizens in tax, the taxpayers in their own countries, but also to a variety of stakeholders in developing countries, from governments of those countries to civil society organisations and parliamentarians, who all want better information about what the money is coming into their country. The openness and availability of this information has the potential to um, radically change the way that aid money is spent and the effectiveness in which aid money is spent. The importance is on the openness of that data so that it could be reused by different groups in different ways to make it accessible in a way that meets their specific need. Some of uh, Hans Rosling's um, uh, uh, bubble charts uh, the Gapminder uh, software in which he illustrates the progress of countries over time uh, using uh, charts that are animated and move. Even before our data became available, Hans was using it uh, in his uh, Gapminder charts and has been terribly effective in raising awareness of development issues. How can you persuade governments uh, that maybe aren't interested in open data that it's worth spending their time and money and effort to, uh, to pay any attention? I, I think that um, demonstration is really the key here. Uh, demonstration of, of services that are good and that are useful and that in particular services that are easy to explain and that, that offer really obvious value that's of general benefit not just niche benefit. We have three goals. The first is let's let's help build community uh, around open data in as many cities that want it around the world. The second, let's give a place where local politicians and government officials can come meet people who care about this and meet people who are engaging on it and then also see all of the cool things that are going around the world and see how much is actually going on and, and uh, others are doing it and that they can do it too. And then the third is, let's actually build something. Let's, let's try to get each community to build something because nothing gets people understanding why open data matters more than when they see a really profound visualization that allows them to understand their community in a way they never understood before. Our job is, is to remind people how important it is that they have access to 
data about what their government does. So whether that's um, write, getting journalists to write stories, um, helping NGOs um, build their campaigns around data, or just creating web apps for ordinary citizens to go online and find out about what's going on. We need to be able to demonstrate that a world in which government data is open is that much better than a world in which it's closed. Normally the best things that come out of, of a new technology or a new opportunity are the ones not thought of. But I really think here, I imagine of kind of electricity, you know, 18, what is it, 1820s or whatever, Faraday is demonstrating electricity to Gladstone, the Royal Society, and Gladstone says to Faraday, you know, what's the, you know, it's very neat, it's great, you can make the lot of frog legs twitch, but what's the point of electricity? And uh, Faraday says back to Gladstone, you know, what's the point of a baby? It's going to grow into something. And I think the point here about open data is that we are now living in an information age, an information society. Data and information are the kind of key infrastructure of that world. Uh, if you look at the way that humans solve problems, we usually try to jump to easy solutions, even if they're hard and complex problems. So I think we need to use the data and the data that we hold about our lives and our environment as a way to find uh, less easy but actually workable answers to the hard questions that we face. Mm -hmm.